And right now in our last video on this unit about structs, we're gonna talk about sorting structs. And the main thing to remember is that we follow the same rules of sorting any other thing, where when we wanna sort a new type of thing, we wanna use the same selection sort uh, or Q sort routine. And then what that what's gonna change is really two things. Um, so the types of the parameters. Also how swapping works. Remember when we talked about sorting strings, the swapping had to change sometimes to use uh, stir copy instead of just uh, changing the pointers. Um, so that's something important. And then of course the main one is the before function is gonna to have to change however we need to compare our new type of things. So the same thing is gonna apply with structs where when we want to sort an array of structs, these are the kind of changes that we're gonna to have to look into um, over top of the normal like selection sort algorithm. Let's look at some examples of that. First one I wanna look at is sorting some points. So I have a text file with some points. Okay, and here's my program that reads in a bunch of points and uh, stores them in an array, a stack-based array, and then prints out the first 20 of them. But right now they're not gonna be sorted. So if I say make points, then we just see the first 20 things in the file in no particular order. So how would we sort them? Well, the standard thing to do is to copy, start by copying the selection sort routine. So here it is from the unit seven notes, same exact selection sort. So I copy that in. Now um, I want to change what I need to change. So instead of taking in an int star, we're gonna take in a point star and the swapping here, we can just swap points as by assigning them. Because remember when we assign structs, it just copies the entire struct. So this will work now. And then the only other thing to do is write our before function. So I'll say bool before point uh, p1, point p2. And for right now, let's think about we have x and y. Maybe we want to sort primarily on x and then kind of fall back to y. So what we would do there is say that if x uh, p1.x is not equal to p2.x, then we can return the ordering based on those. p1.x is less than p2.x, else return p1.y is less than p2.y. So this is gonna be sorting into increasing order based on x and y. Okay, so let's compile. And I mistyped bool as vool, so that'll be a problem. I think this should work now. And so now it's not sorted. Oh, yeah, okay, I forgot to actually call selection sort. So let's do that. Selection sort my points and that have that size. Okay, so now finally, this should maybe actually do it. Yes, so the smallest x values are first. You can see that that's what they're mainly based on. And let's see, do I have any ties? Like see, these are 6.2 and 6.2. So it falls back to ordering them by their y values. Same here with 5.3, minus 5.3. Uh, and so that's basically how sorting works with structs. Uh, the the real struct operations are gonna show up only in the before function. Everywhere else, we're just kind of um, changing stuff like we would change for any type. The real interesting struct parts are gonna come in here. And of course, you, if you wanted to do it as ascending, then you might change the signs. If you wanted to primarily based on the Y, then you might change the order of these checks here. Uh, and you can think about if you wanted to do some more exotic things like sorting based on how far away they are from the origin, from the zero, zero point then you would have to like compute the distance from there and compare based on that, that might be kind of interesting. 
Okay, and then one more example with sorting that'll get a little bit more interesting. Um, think about a silent auction. So what I have in this auction.txt file is a bunch of exciting products like a textbook, a laptop, uh, some pork chops, a clown car, and then some prices that we're saying that people might bid on those products. Okay, and so let's look at my bids.c program. It has a struct to store the information. So the name of whatever we're selling, how many bids there are, and a, an array to store the bids. You should notice that this array is not a stack-based array, it's a heap-based array. And so one of the changes that's gonna happen here is that in order to read all this in, so here's the loop to read everything in, as we read in this number of bids for each item, we then have to call calic in a loop. So whenever you have something like this in a struct where you have a, a pointer inside, so you're going to have a heap-based array inside a struct, if you're going to allocate then an array of those structs, it essentially is a 2D array because we have an array of items, and each item has an array of bits. So now we see like this one calic on the outside, and inside the for loop there's a calic for each uh, list of bits. But otherwise, this works the same as normal, so then we... Uh, haven't sorted them yet, but eventually we will. It's going to print out the top 10 items, and then to free everything, we also have to do that in a loop. My print item function is right here. This takes in a pointer to a single item and prints it out. Now think for yourself for a second, why would I want to have this function take in a pointer rather than an actual item uh, struct? So notice that it takes in a pointer. Normal reasons that we might take a pointer is because we want to change something, uh, but that's not the case here. Printing you shouldn't change what that item is. But there's another reason, which we mentioned before, uh, is when your structs might be potentially large, and especially when we start to get into heap-allocated stuff in structs, then we usually pass around pointers because we don't want to avoid having to make copies of large things. So there's a lot of stuff going on inside this struct with the character array and the double array. Um, and so it's very, very common in C program to pass a pointer to a struct. And so that's why what you see inside this code, it might look weird now, uh, but eventually as we get more used to this, this will feel more and more natural to use. We're using the arrow operator to access like how many bids there are. To access each bid, we say I IT arrow bids index I. What does that mean? Is take this pointer to a struct, follow the arrows to the actual struct and look up the bids field. That's an array, so then look up index i in that field. And so this works. If I say make bids and I run it, it's just going to print the first um, 20 things. So now how can my sorting work? OK, well, I'm going to apply the same things as before. So I'm going to have a before function. But now I want to do everything with pointers. So I'm going to say item star. Um, I1 and item star I2. And I also want a sort function. So void selection sort will take, this will still take an item sort because my array is still an item star. Um, that's data and then an int size. And I better do include stdbool.h before I forget. Now coming down here, I know I'm going to need my before function, but for the selection sort function, what can I do is, again, I'll go right back to my standard selection sort algorithm, paste that in, and then modify it to suit my needs. What are my needs right now? Well, I have an array of uh, items. And we have to think about, so I already changed the type up here. We have to think about our before function now because we don't want to pass the actual item. We want to pass a pointer to those items because the structs can be big. So I'll add in an ampersand there. And now for the swapping, um, now we have to swap items. And how can we do that? In this case, it's going to be fine to just, uh, again, make make copies. Why is that okay? Is because this is going to copy the pointer. So this is copying the pointer to the data. Uh, but then it's going to copy it back and that would be fine. We could also make our own like 
item swap function that would uh, take two items and would do like a, some stir copy to swap the strings and then swap the other things in a different way. But this will uh, work fine for us for now. So now all we need to complete to make this sorting work is how should we sort these items um, for bidding. So one way we could sort, and let's start out with this, is we could just sort them by the name. So we'll return uh, stir comp i1 arrow name. Now we're using the arrow operator because we have pointers and i2 arrow name. And for the heck of it, let's sort in descending order. So we should see the last alphabetical things first in this sorted list that we get out. So if I compile this and run it, then now I get things sorted by reverse alphabetical order of the item name. Cool. Um, but we can now sort however way we want. So one thing that we might want to do is sort according to the auction prices. So we could sort according to like the first price return um, I1 bids zero. So that's f going into this item, into the bids array that's part of the struct, and then index zero. And we could say we wanted the highest bids first, so greater than I2 bids zero. Okay, we can do that. And that works. Now, this is the highest first bid, is what shows up there first. But if you think about it, this might not make the most sense. Um, really, I should be caring about like any bid. So like, see this, uh, the kayak has a really high bid out here. Somebody wants to pay $95 for it, or an even higher one, $98. But this is showing up lower in the list because the very first bid is lower. That's not usually how auctions work. So we might care about like, what's the highest bid? And so how would we sort based on the highest bid without actually changing, without having to sort each array of bids? Well, uh, we could do that all in the before function. All we're trying to change is how the items are ordered. So at this point, all we should ever need to change is the before function to change this ordering. And this is a good example of where it might be convenient to have like a helper function to help us get that value. So we can maybe have like double highest bid, this is like now our standard kind of max loop. I equals one. So I'm skipping the first item now because I'm just checking all the later ones to see if they're higher than that first bid. And now my before function, if I want to compare based on the highest bid, instead of just looking at index zero, I can say return uh, highest bid of item one's bids we're going to return true if that is greater than the highest bid of item two's bids. So let's see if that works. And yes, indeed. So now the kayak is number one because its highest bid is 98 bucks. That's the highest. The pork chops also has a very high bid of 97.86. And uh, so the dollhouse got bumped down to four because um, even though it had a high initial bid, that's only the fourth highest like overall bid. And we can think about other things. Uh, I was thinking about doing a, an even more complicated example, but now I'll leave it to you to think about trying where we would sort based on the second highest bid because that's the way some auctions work for fairness is that whoever wins the auction doesn't pay the price they bid, but they b pay the price of the next highest bid. Um, okay, so that's just all about sorting with structs. This is a more complicated example here because it's a struct that itself has an array inside it that's allocated in the heap. And uh, notice that we store the size of that heap allocated array inside the struct itself as well. Um, and that's kind of a useful technique. But the more that we practice with this, the more that we'll get better with all those pointer and struct and array operations. Uh, and it's just, again, applying everything that we already understand about heap arrays and sorting and structs, but kind of putting them all together.